you. It's a bit of a strong message. I think we saw the correlation in terms of seeing life, having life in us. Um, and often in the world we live in, we're tempted. What will other people think? We don't want to tread on their toes. Let them believe what they want to believe. Maybe we can see some of ourselves in that story in different times in our lives. We want others to like us, so we don't want to, want to rock the boat. And I think it's a very challenging message. And hopefully that movie will stick with you um, going forward. But we see the contrast in our gospel message today, where we see Palm Sunday, and the crowds are just gathered, and they are proclaiming, it says in verse 37, that they are proclaiming the wonderful things, testifying to God's miracles that he has done. So there it has the words Hosanna, praise, but I'm sure they're also saying, because um, Lazarus had just been raised from the dead, so I'm sure they're saying, wow, Jesus, that was amazing, you raised Lazarus from the dead, Jesus, you did this, Jesus, you did that, and they are proclaiming specific acts that Jesus had done, they are shouting them out, they aren't inside a building, and you must realize this took great courage, there we see them with not too much courage. This took great courage. The Pharisees had a price on Jesus' head. They wanted anyone to come forward with knowledge so they could arrest him. The, the Romans, here they are proclaiming Jesus king. How do you think the Romans would have felt about that? There is no emperor but Caesar. And yet, there they are, boldly proclaiming Jesus as king. And Jesus says, when the Pharisees are saying, stop them shouting, he says, even the rocks will cry out. If we do that, even the rocks will cry out. And some people say maybe the rocks will cry out in judgment. Maybe they'll cry out in praise. We don't know the meaning, but what we do know is clear is that Jesus is saying that we need to proclaim and praise the name of Jesus for the marvelous works he has done in our lives and in the lives of others. We see such boldness. And you know, when you look at a gospel story, it's quite nice to look at the other stories together because you get this fuller picture. So if you look at Matthew, it says the whole city was stirred and says, who is this? Can you just imagine the power of those testimonies? They say, this happened and this happened. And everyone starts to see these people proclaiming and saying, who is that? Who is this? Wouldn't you love that in Durban North? Who is this? Who is this they're talking about? A and the crowd Answers boldly, this is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. You see, it's contagious. In John 12, many people heard of the miraculous signs, and they went out to meet Jesus. There was no social media in those days, Jesus posting pictures of Lazarus raised from the dead. It was because they heard, because of the testimony of others, that they went out to meet Jesus. People go out, go to meet Jesus because of others' testimony, because of our testimony. A little later in Matthew, the children are in the temple, and they are praising God. And once again, the Pharisees are saying, Shh, hush them down, hush them down. And Jesus says, from the lips of children, you have ordained praise. It's just the spontaneity. I mean, the children, worship was for the adults. The children weren't meant to be in the temple courts, and there were the children praising God. And just an aside, that even today, sometimes we can get caught up in that, where we think, well, worship's for the adults, and we'll leave the children to do their little bit. And as St. Martin's, we, we have a priority on that. That's why we want the children to be part of our worship at the beginning of the service. Some of them were down at the jungle gym. I discovered my daughter included. And we're saying we want them in the church because worship is caught and taught. And they will catch on to that worship by seeing and experiencing it for themselves. That's why the radical love transformation on Thursday night, our reflection, children, come along, and, and let's be part of worshiping God together. But we see in this picture, people alive to God. Their eyes aren't on themselves, contrary to the, the, the video we had, what will they think of me? They're on Jesus, on the miracles he's done, and they are speaking life, and that life is going out, and we just see this ripple effect happening. In the middle of this picture of life, though, we see a rather different picture. Jesus is going down there shouting, but in the middle he stops. And it says he was weeping. 
And that word is so strong, it can be interpreted as wailing. Jesus is wailing in the middle of all this joy and happiness. And he's looking over Jerusalem. And he's saying, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, if only you would know what would bring you peace. And it's ironic because the word Jerusalem has actually got the word peace within it. And they weren't recognizing the Prince of Peace coming in. And it says, if only you would have known the day of the visitation of God, the coming of God to you. And then Jesus prophesied the destruction of Jerusalem, which happened 40, 40 years later. And it said that it was so complete that even a plow could be driven through Jerusalem. It was that destroyed. So we see this picture of life and then this contrast of, of destruction. And it's important to remind ourselves, like we think, well, that video is a bit extreme. But actually, that's the picture that Scripture gives us. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. It goes on to say, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, good words to hold on to, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because he has not believed in the, one, in the name of God's one and only son. Those are strong words, and it's important that we, that we realize that in this picture. That there is this life, that there is choosing life, we are given that choice, or not. And we, if we come back to that, that video, thinking in the best interests, but actually, what does love say? We're journeying on this love theme. Love speaks life into those around. Love speaks life into our friends' lives, into our families' lives, into the person that we don't even know because we know the love of God for them and we would pass that love on to them. But here we see in this, uh, in this Palm Sunday, in this riding into Jerusalem, we kind of left with a bit of a bitter taste when we know that a few days later, Jesus is crucified and the crowds are shouting crucify. You see, they were expecting the Messiah King. This was the fulfillment of prophecy. Behold, your king comes riding on a donkey. He was coming from the Mount of Olives. Everything was prophecy fulfilled. He was going to obliterate the Romans, and they were so excited. So we don't know in Good Friday if that crowd was somewhere else. We don't know if they were shouting crucify, and we don't know if they were silent. You see, perhaps it was the expectations of God, expectations of Jesus and what would happen, and they weren't met. And maybe you can relate. You look at them and say, how could they do that? But there's sometimes where we have a heart where we're praying for healing for someone and they're not healed. And it's really hard. And we almost feel, oh, where is God in this? We can have other expectations of God. Not that there are expectations and they're not met. And that can be difficult. Maybe they were silent in that they've, they'd done, they'd proclaimed, but, but now they just wanted to be quiet. They were scared of what others would think. And maybe we can relate in times when we proclaim God's name, but maybe that was a while ago, and, and we're just keeping quiet now. What does it look like? This is the message of Palm Sunday, is that even the rocks will cry out. Jesus calls each one of us to proclaim his name, to proclaim it in our situations where we are in the mess of everyday living. I want us to look at the Acts reading, because for me there, there we see a picture of that name of Jesus proclaimed and people worshiping and that contagious effect. So you know the story, Peter and John went to pray, met a lame man, and he asked for alms. And what did they do? Did they, did they give him money? Did they, they start a fundraising brigade to get him a good wheelchair or good, good um, what do you call them? crutches? Had a, had a blank there for a moment. What did they do? There was this expectation of what God would do. And they reached out their hand, and he rose to his feet, leaping and praising God. He went into the temple courts where he'd never been allowed because he was considered a bit broken. And there he was. And what does it say? The crowd came along because they saw him leaping and praising God. It was because of the man's testimony that we once again have this contagious effect of life spilling over. But it doesn't just stop there because the crowd's just amazed with Peter and John saying, Wow, you guys are fantastic. And what do Peter and John do? They could say, oh, thank you, thank you. Oh, God helped us, you know. Footnote, God footnote. 
But no, we see them proclaim it so boldly. It is, it's not by us. They say it's nothing to do with us. It's by faith in the name of Jesus, this man whom you see and know was made strong. It is Jesus' name, repeated again to make it really clear, and the faith that comes through him that has given this complete healing to him, as you can all see. They made it very clear that it was by Jesus and Jesus alone. So now the Sanhedrin, the spiritual leaders, the Jewish leaders, are mad. Pull them in, pull Peter and John in, questioning them. And it says that they were amazed. They saw the courage, because Peter, and, Peter starts giving the gospel message straight about believing in Jesus. And it says they were amazed because they saw the courage of these men and knew they were unschooled, ordinary people. Any of us feel like we're unschooled, ordinary people? people. It's in the Holy Spirit that we're extraordinary, because we are ordinary, but in Jesus we are extraordinary. And they're threatened. You don't talk in the name of Jesus. And, and how does Peter respond? He says, judge for yourselves whether it is right in God's sight to obey you rather than God. For we cannot help speaking about what we have seen and heard. After further threats, they let them go. They could not decide how to punish them because all the people were praising God. Can you see this contagious effect for what had happened? For the man who was miraculously healed was over 40 years old. That's really old. <laughs> Love the way they put that in there. Makes me feel old. <laughs> but you just see how there is a spontaneity. We can't help it. We can't help but proclaim because their eyes are on God. They haven't taken their eyes off like those at Palm Sunday onto themselves. They've kept their eyes fixed on Jesus. And Satan would love to have us move our eyes onto ourselves. What will people think of me? What about my own inadequacies? But look at me. How can I, I, I share about how great God is when I've got so many faults myself? We're taking people's eyes onto Jesus, not onto ourselves. I want to leave us with three thoughts to take away as I believe that we want to be a church, and we are a church that speaks life, and we want to grow in that, that by love, knowing the love of Jesus in our own lives, speaking that life into other people. And there are three encouragements I want to leave us with this morning. The first is, it says they could see, when, when they were before the Sanhedrin, it said that they could see that Peter and John had been with Jesus. That was the difference. Can people see you have been with Jesus? Obviously, one has to be with Jesus to, for that to be seen. We can only give what we receive. And I want to encourage you. You've had the Radical Lent, uh, Love Transformation, Lent Journey devotional. Don't stop when that ends. We can recommend some wonderful, there's some online ones, there's some hard copy ones, devotionals to carry on and journey and spend time and be challenged and grow with Jesus because then our lives are transformed by his love. And through us, others are transformed. The second is, it comes out of expectancy. And yes, some of us may have those times. I think probably all of us, the older we get, where we've really yearned for something and it hasn't happened. But God would fill us by his Holy Spirit with renewed hope and faith in him. To have that expectancy. Imagine if Peter and John had, had just given money or just walked past. But there was a, a Kairos moment, an opportunity. Are we saying in our days, God, surprise me today. Surprise me. It might be a word you've got for that cashier. It might be something for the car guard. It might be something for a family member. You just happen to send an SMS of a scripture verse, and, and they tell you later, Yo, I really needed that. Come with expectancy into our day. And the final one is to be saying, come and meet the king. It's not about our theology. It's not about having all the scripture verses and how do I tell them the gospel message. It's just to be saying, God's done wonderful things in my life. Come and meet him. Come and meet him. It's about just sharing that love and trusting God with the rest. And, and I want to encourage us at this Easter time, people's hearts are open. What's this Easter about? Come, come along to Easter service. Come join us. What about Alpha? When you see that video, there might be people you're thinking of. You say, oh, I just, I don't have the courage. Why don't you say, you know, I've received life through Jesus. Why don't you come along to Alpha? Come test it out. Come ask some questions. Because that is when the contagious effect happens. Love speaks life. And my prayer is that Durban North 
and further afield will be saying, who is this man? They stood, who is this? Who is this king? That that love that speaks life to us will speak life to all around. 